In the last video, we started the ball moving and bouncing against the walls. So we want to add a little more functionality to this. Uh, I'm going to make it so that when the player clicks on the ball, then it's going to act like the ball has been uh, moved to some random location, and then it'll speed up a little bit. So there's a couple steps that need to be done here. So we're going to head back to the project. Uh, just a reminder, don't forget to save your work occasionally so that you don't lose your work. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is handle when the mouse gets clicked on the object. Now, this is actually a two-part event. So I'm going to add a new event, and one of the conditions will be the mouse. So when the mouse, so I'm going to other conditions, not objects, when the mouse button is pressed, okay? And let's do the left mouse button. So when the left mouse button is pressed, but we don't want just any mouse press, we want when it's actually pressed on the object. So I'm gonna uh, go to the ball and we're gonna look for when the mouse is over the object. So there's mouse and touch. The cursor is on an object and um, we'll go ahead and leave it as the default there for accuracy. And that way, this is a two condition event, which means both of these have to be true at the same time. So you have to be pushing down and the cursor has to be over the ball. Now, if that's true, what we're gonna do is make it real clear that they've clicked on it by moving the ball and increasing its speed. But let's start by just moving it first. So to move it, let's add an action. We're going to take the ball and we're going to change its position. So let's go find position here. We're going to change the position of the object. We're going to set its X position equal to. So notice I have to choose set equal to. I'm going to set its X position to be a random number, but a random number that's somewhere near the middle of the screen. And I know the screen in my game is 800 wide and 600 tall. So what I'm going to do is go choose random integer in a range. I don't want it to be too close to the edge. So let's go like 100 away from the edge. So 100, whoops. Uh, yeah, 100 from the edge. That would be 100 from 0. And then 100 from 800 would be 700s because I've got to be in between 0 and 800. And so that would be somewhere in the field, but not on the borders of the uh, of the scene. And then we'll do the same thing with Y, except Y is only uh, zero to 600. So we'll do random in range, which you, by the way, you can copy this. So you could copy this and paste it in here. And then you could just change this. So we know it goes to 600. So 100 or less than that would be 500. So this would be 100 between 0 and 800. And this would be 100 between uh, 0 and uh, 600. So now when I click on this, let's test that it's working. So if I click play, and if I click on it, notice that, yep, sure enough, bink, and notice it starts at different random locations. But it's also a little too predictable because I can see that it just keeps moving at the same angle and speed that it was before. So let's make it go uh, at, at a random angle like we did before. But rather than having to recreate this, let's right click on this one we have up here where it sets the angle and the speed. Let's uh, copy that. And then when we come down, you can see there's a or paste actions next to add action. And let's click that. And it will actually just paste that right here. So now it should change direction as well. Just like at the start of the scene, it changed direction. Now when I click on it, it should change direction. Oh, come on. Oh, it's also going faster. Oh, oh. Okay. Now, the reason it's going faster is because 
uh, right now what it's doing is it's just adding this to the forces that are already there and that's not exactly what I want. What I want it to do is actually stop the ball. So I'm going to go to the ball and I'm going to stop it first. So I'm going to stop it and then move it and then restart it again. Because what it's really doing is just adding those forces on top of whatever are already there and that could give us unpredictable behavior. So now you see it's much more predictable. Okay, it's a random directions, but still the same speed. So that's the first step we have uh, going here. I also though want it to gradually increase in speed, but not erratically, I want it to like progressively increase in speed and that is a perfect way to use a variable. So a variable is a way of storing information and in this case we'll store the current speed of the ball so that we can use that. And so I'm going to go back and instead of double clicking on ball I'm going to click on the three dots here and I'm going to say edit object variables. And you can see I've already added a variable here but let me just get rid of that. Oops, not that way. Let me get rid of it. So I'm going to click that and hit delete. So I have no variables here. Let's add that variable back in. And you can call it whatever you want. I called mine current speed. And I'm going to apply that. And to make this work, we need to set current speed to be a number at the beginning of the scene. So I'm going to go uh, up here to the beginning of the scene. And I'm going to set the ball and I'm going to go find its variables. So if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see variables, modify the variable of an object. And I'm going to set and notice it gives me the option there, current speed, set it equal to and we'll start it at 100 because that's what our original speed was. Now that I have that set up, then what I can do is instead of using a number in here, let's move this variable up above that. Notice I can drag and drop these to reorder them. So I'm going to set the variable to be 100. And instead of just typing a number in here, I'm actually going to put the variable in there. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to double click on this. And instead of typing 100, I'm going to go over to my formula, go to common expressions for the objects, and find a variable, find an objects variable, and the objects variable that we're getting is the ball and its current speed. And you could just type this in. So notice it's the name of the object, variable, and then in parentheses what variable you actually want to access. And so what that does now is whatever I set this to is what the speed will be uh, put in here. So the force, I should say, not the speed, but the force. So the force uh, will be uh, used from whatever that variable is. And because I did it this way up here, I can just copy that, paste it down here and it should do the same thing but we don't want two of these we want to get rid of the one that was just a, a fixed number and now i can actually change the value of that variable so i'm going to copy and paste in here so that it changes the variable just like it did up here but this time i don't want to set it equal to 100 i want to add something and probably not a hundred um oops accidentally double clicked i probably want to add let's say 50 each time and so then if i play this then when i click you'll see it goes a little faster a little faster a little faster a little faster and at some point it's going to get really fast and I just have to keep clicking it and notice it's getting faster and faster. Ah, ah, too fast, too fast. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so it keeps getting faster and faster and faster, but in a predictable way, uh, not some random combination of forces. 
So let's let's look through what we created here. Uh, to summarize, at the beginning of the scene, I set my speed variable to be 100. And then I added a, a force going in a random direction and used that variable's value as the, the length of that of that force vector. Okay, and then when the ball hits the walls, it bounces. And then when the mouse is touched onto, is clicked down on the ball, then we're going to change the variable by adding 50 to it. So that means the first time it would start at 100 and you'd add 50, so it'd be 150. Next time you'd add 50, so it'd be at 200. Next time you add 50, so it'd be at 250, so on and so forth. We stop the ball so that you're not adding forces to each other and getting weird combinations of forces in weird directions. And then you move the ball to some random location and you restart it moving again by choosing a random direction and using this new value for the speed, which really represents the, the length of the of the push vector, the force vector. So um, that gets us going with the basics of a game. And next time we're going to address adding a global variable.